Two minutes. Okay. And then uh, as soon as they get their food, sounds good. We're online, right? I love it. Thank you, Gigi. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I know. That's true. That's true. All right, he sat down. Ladies and gentlemen, President-elect Rahul Sharma here with you today at the Rotary Club at West Jacksonville Weekly Assembly here today, July 17th, 2024. Our club members who are joining us via video conference, including Jerry McCool, John Barley, Tim Alters, and Frank Shine, we uh, do ask you to uh, adjust your audio levels for our meeting clarification today but an encouragement to submit any questions that you have at the appropriate time. And our production team with Carter Rosenblum and Joe Springer will make sure that we get it on air. Glad to have you guys here. Uh, certainly a blessing to be able to fill in for President Tim Johnson, who was on work assignment out of town this week. Uh, but we're gonna have a great show for you all here uh, today. Before we get started, uh, certainly would like to uh, give thanks and uh, also uh, reinforce the importance of one rotary, one club, we're all American. Our invocation will be given by A.J. Aviles, followed by Mike Ritter, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. A.J. Aviles, please come up to the podium. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the blessings of life, the chance to be here this morning with fellow Rotarians and friends. Thank you for our safe arrival, this meal, and our guests. Help us make productive use of our time together here at Rotary and each setting we find ourselves today. Grant us wisdom, peace, and a sense of gratitude for the many opportunities that we have. Amen. 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 Mike Ritter now leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. AJ, uh, thank you for the blessing for our club today as our Rotarians are 
making their way inside here at Timaquana Country Club. A special thanks to Tiffany Bullard, the assistant banquet manager who helped uh, set up the stage for today's program, uh, along with our uh, production staff of Carter Rosenblum and Joe Springer. Let's please give them a round of applause. If you all remember when I was uh, uh, fortunate to uh, host our programs as Sergeant at Arms, I always referred to Stu Irwin and Patty Chapman as our West Jacksonville Air Traffic Control Tower, making sure that every check-in was registered for today's meeting. Let's give Patty and Stu a big round of applause as well. You know, I like to use my feet, I like to use my hands, and so the fact that I have the uh, freedom to be able to wear my rotary headset uh, but how about the first impression team Rotarians here today? Uh, Ken Baker, as good as it gets, uh, a sincere, genuine, kind-hearted welcome. Let's give it up for Ken Baker today. Ken, nice job. You know, we are uh, constantly uh, focused on uh, building the future of our club. Rotary Club of West Jacksonville has an unbelievable heritage and tradition uh, I had this conversation on President's Night with uh, past President Kathy Cole. Uh, what a special night it was about seven years ago uh, when West Jacksonville celebrated a milestone uh, anniversary with the blessing of R.I. President John Germ and the opportunity of bringing all the wonderful uh, leadership uh, who helped pave the way for this club's future uh, with an attention to the priorities and the areas of focus. That was such a wonderful night, and that be able to bring the past with the current and looking forward to the future is certainly something that we're looking forward to. But building membership for the future and having the opportunity, the calling of Lee Sasser for a very special presentation. I can't wait to do this. Lee, come on up here. Uh, one would say that it's probably in your bloodlines. I think that we have to give thanks to the most important position on earth, your mother, Nina Sasser, uh, for giving birth to you. But... I think this is fair to say that we're going to take off the red shirt tag that you have on and uh, have our club welcome you as an official member of West Jacksonville Rotary Club, Lee Sasser. Yes. So basically, Lee, what this means is that we can tackle you now when we see you and uh, we can go ahead and take that red shirt penny off. But uh, thanks so much. We're looking forward to great things from you. And uh, really appreciate your presence here and the things that you're going to do for our club. Thanks again, Lee. Congratulations. Another round of applause for Lee Satzer. You know, AJ, it's interesting. Um, every week when you put together uh, the West Word, uh, that's like the equivalent of a press release. And I think that you are so skilled that you can put those things together with your eyes closed. It's amazing. I haven't even sent you the information yet, and you already sent out the press release. So really uh, appreciate your, uh, you know, focus on branding and public imaging and everything that you do. Uh, and well, it's hard to believe you're almost coming up on your one year anniversary. So if there's anything such as a rotary rookie of the year, AJ Avalos should be at the top of the list. Mike Ritter, thanks again for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I'd like to call upon uh, the headmaster. I know he's retired, chancellor, principal. They all mean the same thing. Palmer Bell with this week's family in road report. Let's big round of applause for Palmer Bell. Come on up, Palmer. And now I'm just tired instead of retired. You're, you're just tired. We need to work on your conditioning, Palmer. Uh, for this week's family of rotary, we have one announcement that be interesting to the entire club, I think. Uh, Stephen Rowland was here earlier. He had to go. But Stephen um, is a CPA. He's now been hired by the CPA firm Littman and Gerson as manager of financial forensics and business valuations. The sad news, well, it's good and bad news. The sad news is that the firm is in Massachusetts. The good news is that he can do it remotely, so yeah, he's staying put right here. So, congratulations to Stephen. Welcome back, Jimmy. We're sorry for uh, your loss, the loss of your mom, but uh, welcome back to your Rotary family. There were several birthdays last week, and I think we only got a few of them, so um, 
mention again for Lee Sasser, your birthday was on the 9th. And uh, Scott Hudson, yours was on the 11th. This week, John Runyon. Are you sharing how many? Uh, no. no. You don't know. 67. 67. Yeah. Very good. And, uh, and Larry Daly is on the 18th. So how about that? Happy birthday to all of you. Here's an old time joke. So if you're old, you've probably heard it in one form or another. It's, uh, I don't know, some of these jokes end up with a life of their own and then disparaging to one occupation or another. Uh, inflation changes the values of the money involved. But you get the idea. You can tell this to anybody and, um, and fill in anything you want to, to sell it to the audience. But a new doctor shows up in town, and the doctor uh, is trying to figure out how he's going to make a inroads in the community. So he comes up with an idea. He says he puts out a sign out in front of his clinic, and he says, uh, "Evaluations. If I uh, heal you, you owe me twenty dollars. If I can't heal you, I owe you one hundred dollars." This sounds like a pretty good deal. But some wise guy decides, I'm going to show this person who's boss in our town. So he shows up and he says to the doc, Doc, you've got to help me. Whatever you do, I just can't taste anything. So I need your help. Give it, give it to me straight. What's my problem? Can you help? The doctor says, nurse, go to drawer 33 and bring the vial from drawer 33. Nurse comes back with a little vial. The doctor says, you know, this is extremely powerful medicine, so I can only give you a few drops. So he takes out the dropper, puts a few drops on the fella's tongue. That's gasoline. You're healed. $20. <laughs> so the guy is now embarrassed, and he comes back the next day, and he says, Doc, I, I don't know what's happened Thanks for the taste, healing the taste, but now I have no memory. I don't know if it was the medicine you gave me, what it was, but I can't remember a thing now. Everybody asks me, I can't, just can't remember. The doctor says, hmm, nurse, go to the drawer 33 and bring me the vodka. Don't know why that's gasoline. You're healed, $20. <laughs> so now he's really embarrassed and he comes back the next day and he says, I can't see a thing. Now you've given me the medicine, you've embarrassed me, now I can't see anything anywhere. Restore my sight. Doctor says, well, you know, that's not really my gig. I, I really don't have any knowledge in ophthalmology. I can't help you. So uh, here's your $100. Takes out a $5 bill and he gives it to the fellow. This is not $100, this is a $5 bill. You're healed. Give me $20. <laughs> You know, Palmer, with a uh, joke uh, that long, uh, I think now I'm tired. <laughs> Good job, PB. Thank you for uh, this week's Family of Rotary. And uh, I echo the sentiment about seeing uh, JK back in the house. Jimmy, uh, President Tim, uh, had shared uh, sympathies uh, on behalf of the club. So we're thinking of you and your whole family. Uh, you've been through a lot, man. And so we're going to continue to be with you, spirit, prayer, and right beside you as well. I've got, I've got uh, advice for any young couple that's just been married with you. Sell your house after five years. Don't wait 30 days. It's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, good to see you. Um, uh, a a, a well-deserved promotion that was announced last week. Uh, he put in a lot of time the last couple of years to make sure that every show uh, was produced well and uh, brought to all of our viewers, whether they were here in person or uh, visiting remotely from their home office. And that's Joe Springer, well-deserved promotion from, you know, sitting in the producer seat, our sergeant at arms who will introduce our guests and visiting Rotarians. Joe Springer, ladies and gentlemen. Well, first of all, CNN called. They want their headset back at the end of the hour. So be ready for that. Welcome, everyone. It's going to be another great meeting we're going to have today. We do have a couple of guests. Ike Sherlock, do you have someone to introduce to us? 
I guess today is maybe quite influential for Gary Scott. That was going to be possible. And also, back in the back, Stanley Cantor is going to be our speaker today, but he has a guest with him. To some of you members that have been around for a while, you'll recognize Carol. Carol Sack, it was so good to see you. This was Beth Benton and Marty Sack's wife. So, welcome to the club. We appreciate you being here. Glad to be here. Um, I don't believe we have any other guests. Did anyone else sneak in that I didn't see or get registered? All right. Do you have on your notes? You have on your notes? No. <laughs> Joe Springer, thank you very much for uh, in welcoming our uh, visiting Rotarians and guests. Uh, at this time, I'd like to, uh, and Joe, thank you for this next segment, uh, reminding me about the importance of the work that Judy Matheny and the emphasis on our partnership and relationship with Riverside High School. Judy, if I could please call you up uh, to the podium, please, to, to share with us about a, a recent highlight and uh, all the great work that you all are doing in the community right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Judy Matheny. Thank you so much. We had a lot of fun yesterday. We were at Riverside High School eating about 65 participants uh, that are rising seniors. Uh, that were putting together college applications, scholarship applications, all that kind of thing, and they kind of came together. And so Rotary, last year, our club sponsored two days of lunches for them during this session. And uh, this year, we sponsored just the one day, but that was yesterday. And uh, those of you who are here that participated, we had Dane and Pierce there, we had Ed there, we had Mark, AJ, uh, who am I forgetting? Oh, and Joe, yeah. It was a great turnout and everybody- And Ali. Um, we're going to do a very similar thing again, and it's going to be to feed the returning um, teachers. And it's going to be on August 6th. Okay, this is, I'm taking my cues from AJ back there. So we'll have an opportunity to have you participate again if you'd like to do that. And we have some really, really good uh, momentum going for the Interact Club that's planned to be started there with the start of school, which is that second week in August. And we were recently notified that a, um, a grant application put in for the club to fund field trips for the students at Riverside High School working through the Interact Club was approved. And so they have will have $5,000 it's a match, 2,500 from us, 2,500 from the district to fund those field trips that will be used for educational advancement, community service, and just uh, more exposure to the outside. So we're all excited about that. What about the theme for the kids? Do you have anything on the teacher thing? A uh, question from the crowd, Joe Springer. I wasn't listening. She okay, just a clarification. Judy Matheny, you know, it's interesting that highlight and the uh, reward of the $5,000 grant that was um, mentioned last week by AJ, and you teed him um, up very nicely alongside the uh, Riverside High School principal who was introduced to our club as well. Uh, a lot of value in being able to provide not only access to an education, uh, but to be able to deliver powerful experiences through field trips and providing that kind of exposure to those students, uh, really, I think it's going to build the pipeline for Rotary in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. They, they liked our presence there and said that to have the adults there just helping out, just being around, really is meaningful. And I think that we'll have a really great opportunity through these field trip pieces going forward into the year. Because so many of these kids just get bussed into the school and they get bust back out and their interaction with each other is really only while they're there and they're kind of on their own for everything else once they get home. So this, I think, will create a greater community and get them more engaged in our community. 
That's really great. Judy, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Another round of applause for Judy Cleaney and the work that's happening at Riverside High School. Uh, our next segment now is uh, the program introduction. Uh, I am blessed and privileged and uh, a personal point of pride for me uh, to invite and welcome back uh, a Rotary Lifetime Letter winner, uh, past president, 1981-82, a native of Jacksonville, but in learning about Stanley Cantor over the course of the last 13 years, I was first introduced to Stanley uh, through Michael Bryan. OB's in the house. Great to see you, OB. Back in 2011, through our partnership with the YMCA. And what I really came to appreciate about Stanley Cantor, who's our guest speaker today, is that there are three elements that are particularly important to him. And he's going to share about that with us today as a Rotary Club. I'm talking about positive leadership. I'm talking about the ability to express resilience. And I'm also talking about the importance of kindness. And this gentleman has exhibited those elements throughout the course of his life. And I'm really privileged to have him come speak to us uh, in what will be a fun chat and it will be interactive with the audience as well for our longtime committed Rotarians that have been with us for multiple decades, I know you've had opportunities to interact with Stanley and, and now to be able to welcome him onto the stage for this conversation. It's my honor to bring back past president, active emeritus, Stanley Cantor. Come on up, Stanley. You know, Stanley is, uh, I'll help him, Carol, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll go side. We'll go step by step. In fact, if we were, you no, know, you don't need any help. One step in front of the other uh, brings a mafioso style to West Jacksonville from the Al Pacino of uh, the Rotary Club of West Jack. Uh, Stanley, you, you look great, and uh, I want to bring you up here uh, to the front. Nice setup. Go ahead and have a seat here. Can I tell a joke? Uh, you, you'll, you'll get an opportunity for that. I promise. I promise. This is going to be your microphone for today's conversation. Uh, Joe Springer tells me that it's hot and it's live, so be careful what you say, young man. Uh, Stanley, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we can hear you, Stanley. Welcome, Stanley. I, you know, I have to start off by saying, uh, you know, for you, uh, the the success that you've had in business, and we'll get to that in just a moment through First Coast Supply and all the work that you've done throughout Northeast Florida. Um, you know, I, I'm just so happy to be able to say that, you know, being here today with you has to bring back a lot of memories. Uh, how meaningful was it for you, Stanley, when you arrived to be able to reconnect with so many friends, longtime members of the club and meeting some of the new members as well? It's a pleasure being here. I want you to know that. I mean, so Rory has always meant so much to me. I've been in Rotary about 70 years, or almost you know, 65 years I've been in Rotary. Wow. What's really changed since I've been here. I think I think we know who uh, the host of the show is. I think we know who the host of the show is. Stanley, you look great. Uh, Michael Bryan is actually sitting right over there on the far side. He just raised his hand, and uh, and he obviously you know you, you put us together. But you know what's the secret to your staying power? You look so young. I mean, look at the hair. Look at the suit. I mean, you 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 make health and wellness a priority, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, I'm very lucky. I'm 90 years old. I'm probably the oldest past president you've had. I was, I was president in 1981. That's right. 81. I was president. I'm the, but being president, I was president longer than anybody else because the president before me got sick. So for six months, I, I had I was president for him. So I, I'm in president uh, over a year and a half. So when I got to be president, I knew what to do. <laughs> I, I, I had a good set staff and everything. You know, Stanley, you know, and, and learning about your humble beginnings, obviously born and raised in Jacksonville, growing up in the San Marco uh, neighborhood of Jacksonville. Uh, you know, you hear about the partnership with Riverside High School. We've got a number of Robert E. Lee High School alumni in this room. You're a proud graduate of Lee High School. Uh, service above self, the service you gave to our country as a member of the United States Army when you were stationed in Japan. Uh, I'd like for the whole club 
uh, to join me in congratulating and thanking Stanley for his service to our country. You know, you know, you know, stationed in Okinawa. You were stationed in Okinawa. Our artillery captain. Yeah. That, and that also, that experience in serving led to an opportunity for you to further your studies at the University of Florida. Yeah. When I go to your office, it's covered in two colors, orange and blue. Talk, talk about I, talk, talk about your educational journey in, in the University of Florida and how much it's changed. I was very lucky at University of Florida. Uh, I earned my own way there. I didn't have any money. So I went, I went in the current, I went in the, uh, sorry, in the, uh, the army. Uh, service there, what do you call it? it was, uh, anyway, four years I was in the army, uh, you know, in the army. So I graduated on a second lieutenant. I went to, I was in the artillery. So they sent me to, I wanted to go to Japan because I was going to have a good time. They sent me to Okinawa. And yeah. that's where I was for three years. I was very lucky because when I was there, uh, they had, that time we had the largest gun we ever had in the, in the history of the United States. It was an atomic cannon. I don't know if you know about it. That's what we had. And, and that's what, that they fired, fired out uh, atomic missiles. We, we needed it. But then I was I was taught how to handle it. It was a great experience for me. I grew up when I was in the, in the Army. You know, Stanley, uh, over six and a half decades of, of service, uh, and when you also look at your time at Rotary, uh, tell us about your beginnings at Rotary and, and who was instrumental in bringing you into this organization? Well, I was very lucky because I was, I worked, I always worked for Allstate Pipe Supply and we were very close to WW Bill Gay. Being, and Bill Gay knew me and told me that's why I got into Rotary. So being in Rotary at that time was completely different than it is now. Because when you got in uh, that rotary, I, I, I didn't get a, 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 a I didn't get, get a classification. Because that's what they do it. You, you know, as assistant to another late man. So for one year, I was assistant to Julius Fletcher. And then after that, they voted me and they gave me, and I got my badge. So that's how I got started then. But I was very lucky at that time because Bill Gay was there. Um, Bob Shirkloff is a great friend around everybody friend here. And I knew Bob and Bill, and that was so lucky because of those two guys. Mm -hmm. Lou Bradley was here also, was the president of the, the, for the Senate before we, when we retired. So we had a lot of great people in the club when I got here. You know, it's interesting. I had this conversation uh, recently with uh, Jimmy Kelly. A lot of members in our club who have served throughout the course of time, looked up to the likes of Bill Gay and Bob Shirkliff. Uh, it could be said about Bob Shirkliff's legacy in this city, uh, perhaps one of the great men of our city who achieved the highest levels of success in business and the beverage industry, uh, but also willing to give back and to demonstrate an example about what it means to give back. You also referenced Bill Gay, a civic giant, both who had strong ties to this club, Stanley. Absolutely. Talk about the resilience, because there was a point in your life as you were serving Rotary where you had to redefine yourself in your career. Talk about your career starting out in Allstate, Pipes, and Supply. But what was it about Bill Gay, about giving you a chance to redefining your career? Well, he was, he was my mentor. And Bill Gay, I walked in his office, he had more honors than anybody I've ever seen. He walked in another room, there's uh, plaques all over the place. But Bill was a great guy. He's my mentor. But one thing he taught me is, is that never, never own it, no, no, not, never bought anything in the bank. <laughs> so I always remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he really helped me with everything I did. And I was very fortunate to have him. He, he helped a lot of people in this city particularly with getting started in business, investing in them because he believed in them, the power of Rotary, bringing like-minded people together to do good for other people. And that set a trajectory for you, Stanley, yeah. after you know that association with Bill, which lasted all the way up until his That's passing right. a few years ago. But I was very fortunate in those 10 years to be there. 
the road was completely different than this and that. I mean, we had a lot of older people. Uh, we had Lou Brantley, we had W.W. W. Gay, uh, Bob Shercliffe, a lot of people in business, you know. So I'm very lucky to learn from them. Now, Stanley, I'm going to take you back into the rotary time machine. You've shared with members about how proud you were of your presidency, your administration here in Rotary. So back in 1981, 82, what were some of the challenges that you all had to face as a club? And what were some of the things that you are proud of, the things that you accomplished, considering the great things that Rotary does, improving health, quality education? What were some of the things that you're proud of? One thing I was very lucky because I was, I was I was president of the club longer than anybody else. It was almost eighteen months, more than eighteen months. I was president, and because the other guy retired, retired, he got sick. So when I got to be president, I knew what I was going to do. I had a great staff, great people like Frank Fraser, great Frank, that Frank, Frank uh, Hauser, Frank Hauser, uh, he was vice president. And, you know, actually, Ruby Exley, I mean, Exley was here. So I, I was really, I was young. So I had to grow up real quick. And I did, I hope to. You know, Stanley, I want to talk a little bit about family. Uh, it means so much to us that your sister, uh, Carol, is here. I had great conversation with her leading up to today's engagement. Um, you know, the reflections we share about her late husband, Marty Sack, uh, a personality unlike any other what were some of your reflections about Marty and his service to this club? Well, Marty, uh, who who knows Marty here? Y'all know him? <laughs> All the hands go up. No, you know about Marty. <laughs> 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 he became a member. Of, I, I made him become a member. When he was president here, there's a riot the whole time. He could get up and talk about a joke. He, he thought it was, people would die laughing. And then he was so I was so lucky to have he's my brother-in-law. You know what he used to tell me? He says, Your brother-in-law, because my, my wife is Carol Sack. That's what that's what he you know he called me. But anyway, he was he was an outstanding president. He did a lot for the company uh, from the from the for Rotary. I wanted me to be district governor. He didn't want to do it. All he wanted to be in Rotary and West Side Rotary. That's all he wanted. And that's the truth. But he, he, he I, I, it's just, you know, he can get up and speak and, 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 and as a minister and everything. And he just was a wonderful guy. You know, one thing that has not changed over the course of time, Stanley, is the club's commitment to the four way test and the consistency and the discipline that our club and the clubs all throughout the world that demonstrate those four important behaviors. How much? How how pleased are you to still see that while clubs and club focuses might change, those values still remain the same? Well, one, of the, one of the things we did when I was president, went to the Naval Air Station, talked to the prisoners there, talked to them about rotary and what they what they should do when they get went out of, you know, out of jail. And I told them to come see me and the people we trying to Frank and everybody else, we did that. And that's what we did uh, that, that year. Uh, what, there was a couple other things we did also. Uh, Stanley, feel free in between conversation to take a, a sip of water because I know that I'm you know, throwing the kitchen sink at you and the pace at which that our conversation is happening. Uh, but again, I, I think that you know, for you to be able to reflect, for you to be able to share the experience and hear about some of the things that are happening in Rotary right now, it has to be reaffirming to you that the West Jacksonville Rotary Club remains strong and focused on growth and development for the future. Uh, 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 Rotary is my life. Uh, so I was in the early 60s when I got the Rotary. And, and one of the things that we did when I was president, when we went to, you know, so talking about going to the jail, um, we, um, I had the lieutenant governor from Florida visit us, pick them up, took them to, to the club, you know, took them back to the airplane. And he did it because I called him. He said, I want you to meet these people. And he came for us. So I was very lucky doing stuff like that. And it was just a great time, great time for me. One of the things we normally did, you know, I don't think you do now, 
when we have when we had the thing when we had Thanksgiving, we had the Reverend, I forget his name, when the Baptist Hawk spoke to us. He's the first one that did it. Now you have another uh, uh, another person to do it, but it is great. And um something else uh, I forgot what it was, but um, Stanley on that topic, when you talk about Thanksgiving and you know, regardless of season, when you can bring people together, please be assured that you know Doug Milney still continues to share the story of Thanksgiving. And for our first year club Rotarians to be able to have that opportunity to hear sort of the progress of our country. Listen, if you look throughout the club, you, you see a group of people who are focused and willing to stay true to the mission. It's got to really be important too to promote female leadership in the club. I referenced Kathy Cold earlier. You had such an unbelievable friendship and relationship, a level of respect for her father. Isn't it nice to see and her too? And and Kathy Cold as well. Uh, go ahead. Well, she's she's my lawyer. Where's my sister? Stand up. Carol, stand up. <laughs> this interchange could go on for a long time. <laughs> but if you look across the room, you got Kathy Cole, you got Gigi Carroll, you got Alberta Hips, who you know, Alberta? Alberta is in the back. She's yeah. waving at you right yeah. now. Okay. You know, you, you got Judy Matheny, who is only in her second year, but the attention to detail that she's brought. I think it's really important, Stanley, well, to acknowledge here? Judy. You, well, you heard Judy earlier. Oh, yeah. Julie, Judy is here. Uh, and, and I think it's really important that the club is putting an emphasis on membership, but also inviting the experiences and talents of women. And and I think, you know, I mean, you saw Lee Sasser, you know, whose mother is a past president. And the best advice that she gave me is be yourself. And that's what you've always said. And I think it's so important when we talk about positive leadership, resilience, redefining yourself, whether it be in your personal life, whether it be in business or a service to others and Rotary is that you have to be true to yourself. We still have time. I'd like for a round of applause for Stan. He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job, man. I, I want to take you 12 rounds if you want to go. One thing I want to take you 12 rounds if you want to go. I want you to remember, persistence and determination was everything I did. And that's, that's why I was su successful, because I knew that I had to do that. Stanley, I want you to take a quick break, take a little sip of water. Joe Springer, I'd like for you to be our floor manager. I'd like to invite some questions from the floor because the relationships that Stanley has uh, in our club are, are really powerful. I see a couple of hands go up, but Joe, I'll let you manage that while Stanley takes a sip and Carter. Couple of questions. I am that ago from Bishop Snyder High School that came into a room full of 100 men and maybe three women bopping in with my high school students with the Interact Club that this club sponsored. And now Judy is rekindling that. I wanted to ask you, what is, I mean, you have a lifetime of Rotary. What is your favorite Rotary memory? Well, my favorite memories is well, when I was president, we had always had dances. We always went to uh, we went to we went to a club. Where we could we could shoot bird, you know everything. That's what we did. I always had something going on. And when I when I when my when, my, when you was up with we had we had a band and we had singing and dancing. And it was a wonderful. So that's what I did because I, I knew all about what I had to do. So Stanley, thanks for coming. It's great to see you. Will you tell the club the story you had told me years ago about how Mr. Gay really helped you out, was a catalyst for your personal and business life? Great to see you. Well, I was young, didn't have any money. I was with first home, first school supply, 
about two years. And he, get, he, he, get, he took me to the bank. He says, this guy's not going to be psyched draft. He's going to pay you in 30 days to give him 2% count discount. And boy, did that help me. That was Bill Gay. And, and I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want any money from him. I never even asked him for anything. But, but he was just a mentor for me. And then I can't say enough about Sheriff Club. I got to know him very well. And you know, when he got to be president, he'd stand up there and talk to people. He had a book, he turned it over and it read from that the script. And it was amazing how he did it because he came across without this just saying everything. He said, he said, so I was very lucky we had these great people. Lou Brantley, Bill Gay, Bob Shercliffe, all these guys. Gigi and Ed, thank you for your questions. You know, Ed, it's interesting, the story about First Coast Supply Incorporated. I mean, this is a premier appliance distributor that also specializes in cabinetry, countertops, outdoor kitchens. Bill Gay helped brand that company, but it was a belief in Stanley in building a staff, of trusted workers who worked hard, uh, but then also believed in output, making a difference, similar to Rotary. And over time, to be able to maintain that, he actually hired a 19-year-old young upstart named Tim Deck in cabinets, part-time. Tim Deck is now running that he owns, company. He owns, he, he owns, he owns it. it now. Just the same belief. Ed. That's so cool. And will you, Rahul, tell the uh, club your story from the 50th anniversary, how you ended up joining the club via Stanley? That's exactly right, Ed. Uh, Stanley uh, inviting me uh, to Rotary Club West Jacksonville, of course, when we would meet at the Yacht Club and talking about a, a first impression. As I mentioned about, you know, Kathy Cold on stage at the podium calling up past presidents to have the Rotary International president making a special appearance in John Germ, sharing compliments about the work of this club. And I'm thinking to myself, if this is the first impression that I have of Rotary, this is a very high standard. And so when you talk about having those kind of figures in this community, not only stalwarts, Ed, but uh, a consistency of giving back, a lifetime of giving back, and really building a tradition with this club was so attractive to me. I wish that other club members had a similar experience for me to be able to have that. So. That was some of the things that I remember from that night. And to be able to see Stanley, Bob Shirtcliffe, Bill Gay, and the like embrace one another in that fashion, they were all there that night, was pretty special. Thank you. Stanley, take us back a little bit. When you started um, in Rotary, where, where was the club physically meeting, and then where did it go? To So here we end up at The club at that time started in Sandy Steer Room. You know where that is? The old people know that's uh, that's uh, on Beaver Street. Uh, the food the food network there. So we Sandy Steer Room. We had to climb the stairs to see everybody. And the two things they had were one of them: fish and steak. The steak was tender because it was what do you call it? Was Put it in the refrigerator for age. Age. It was so delicious, unbelievable. But that's what we had. We could climb it up the stick. We had so many great, I think we had about 85, 90 people in the club at that time. That was uh, 60 years ago. So, so, what you're saying is the venues back then were not as nice as they are now. We had to work our way up oh, to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Ludwig, thanks for the question. You know, when we were, when I was a treasurer, we collected the money that that we I had to go to the bank and deposit. We we we, didn't, we had no computers then. We did it all by hand. Mike Mike Crumpler has a question. President Stan, we're so happy and honored that you're here with us. God bless you. Yeah. Come back more often. And uh, just wanted to speak briefly to the classification that you brought up earlier. Maybe for the newer members, it used to be that there would be only one banker in the club. He could have an additional actor. There used to be there was one real estate developer in the club, and he could have an additional actor. Chef College would speak to this as well. 
or if the chef was uh, the additional actor to Rod Porter, I don't know if y'all knew Rod from the old Atlantic Bank book on Castle, but it used to be very limited in the scope of the members, yeah, and you could not get in. So I guess that helped push people to different clubs, but the idea was, and so Stan, if you could speak to that, and also if you couldn't, if you wouldn't mind telling the story, that tell a story on Marty about President Marty. About the stool, about the footstool. <laughs> that, that was a classic. You know, at that time, I was sh I, I, I was I was short. You've grown a few inches since then. You've grown a few. You've grown a few. Had a had a stand in and stood on the talk to the top the the rotary. I got away with it. Well, they boy, he's a tall guy. <laughs> they saw it like anyway. What we had is that at the end of the year, uh, we had when my year was over, we had a band, I had lunch, we had dinner, sitting down and dancing because I knew what to do. Well, we we it was wonderful what we did. No, any other questions? Just two comments. Carol says that she still has the stool if anybody needs to borrow it. So <laughs> take care of that. She still has the stool. And then second of all, you told me something earlier when we were talking. I'm sure all of y'all are aware of Mr. Shearcliffe. And you know that there is the Shearcliffe Award that goes out every year. Could you tell us who started that Robert Shearcliffe Award? I did. <laughs> When I was president of the, of the Rotary, we had Bill Gay there as a mentor of mine. You know, and he won all kinds of awards. We had Bob Shearcliffe, I knew very well. So I had to make it a decision. I told the board, I said, we're going to have to, we're going to have an award, an outstanding Rotary, Rotarian. So I thought about it. Bill Gay sitting over there. And I had said, we'll have, we'll, we'll have Bob Shearcliffe. He didn't say, but Bill didn't say a word. <laughs> Best thing I ever did have Bill Shearcliffe award. Now, this guy was unbelievable. You, you, you all know. Among the most uh, proud pieces of hardware that exist and is on display in Stanley's office is a Bob Shearcliffe award that was presented to him in 2019. And he's got awards that cover up the entire wall space at First Coast Supply, but the one that he's perhaps the most uh, proud of is uh, receiving yeah. that one in Bob's namesake. Rory, Rory, Rory's my life. I want you all to get other people. Uh, you all should go down and get other men and women to come here. But this is a fabulous club. And you know, they, they can spend two hours here. They should. And you learn so much from Rotary. I, everybody does. But you know, a lot of people are not in the office, they leave. They eat and they leave. But I noticed I don't think anybody left today. <laughs> no, they, they maintain their seats today, Stanley. And uh, I think what's really important for you to know also is that each month uh, Rotary International will produce a theme for us to uh, uphold and to really promote. And because this is President Tim Johnson's year, uh, of leading our administration uh, for next month, membership and membership retention will be a theme. And so I think that's going to be really important that's for right. the club coming up. That's, that's so important for this club. Yeah. Don't you have more women than are here? Heck yeah. Why don't, why, <laughs> why, why don't I should say ladies? <laughs> ladies, well, where are they? Well, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna keep building. We're gonna keep building. I want to make sure I'm I'm good on time. I'm looking at my uh my my time clock here. I got a couple of thumbs up, and so ladies here, absolutely. Stanley, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, your lovely wife Sharon Irons Cantor. She couldn't be here today, uh, but she is a a big uh, advocate of your work in the community, particularly with Rotary. Your, your daughter, Perry, who is a uh, professional private banking executive, and your granddaughter, uh, Zoe, who is a, a proud graduate of the University of Michigan. Uh, you, you've touched a lot of lives uh, in and throughout Jacksonville, and I think it's really fair to say that you've touched uh, the 
lives here at Rotary Club of West Jacksonville. I'd like to uh, ask the club in joining me with another round of applause for past president Stanley Camp. <laughs> Stanley, to uh, to show our appreciation for your dedicated service and commitment to Rotary and what it means to this club, uh, West Jacksonville would like to present you uh, with a Paul Harris Plus Six uh, special edition pin uh, for our uh, club members to see. Uh, Stanley, this is uh, our sincere expression of gratitude for all of your uh, service and support. I'm going to put it on for you uh, after the presentation because it might take me a few minutes. Uh, but I just wanted to say on behalf of the club, we really appreciate it. This honors for you. Stanley Cantor, thanks so much again. Before I leave, I want to tell you a joke. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> my, my partner, Tim Deck, told me, go down this road. It's a dirt road. Go down about 10 miles, and you'll see the new, the new, the new subdivision going on. And there's a new house going on. See it because we're furnished in appliances, cabinets, and granite. And tell me what you think. See what you see. So when you go down this dirt road, it's dirty, and you, you go, go slow. So I went for, I was going 45 miles an hour. I was 40 miles an hour. I said, chicken, follow me. A chicken's following me. The chicken's going 60 miles an hour to the end of the street. I see the chicken. He's got three legs. He turns left, goes all the way down another block, sees a, sees a, a, a farmer there, then turns right, turns left. So I turn down, go all the way down the road, and I get I got on my car, I see the I see that farmer. I said, You see that three legged chicken? Oh, yeah, I saw the three legged chicken. Well, what do you think about the three legged chicken? He says, I love the, I love the drumstick. My wife loves the drumstick. Um, my son loves the drumstick. I said, do you, how do you eat them? I said, I don't know. I can never catch one. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you, Stanley. Uh, one more round of applause for Stanley Cantor. Stanley, stay, stay with me. Don't, don't leave. Stay up here with me. Um, Next week's uh, speaker is going to be Cassie Moyers uh, with the Rotary Youth Exchange Program. And uh, you don't want to miss that. Again, the emphasis on building the future of Rotary. And so Cassie will uh, speak to us about that. Uh, be sure to also uh, RSVP on the calendar uh, for the social that will take place uh, next month in August. And also a, another important reminder, the next RLI opportunity is August 10th in Gainesville. Be sure to register on the DAC DB calendar. At this time, I'd like to uh, call up to the podium uh, Assistant Governor, past President Ike Sherlock, who will lead us in the four way test today. Things you think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Second, Thank you all. Assistant you. Governor Ike Sherlock, thank you for leading us in the four-way test. That concludes our Rotary Assembly for today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Have a great day and God bless America. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.